So welcome back everyone. Today's project is going to be prepping out this uh, lump of rock, which does contain fossil, I promise. You can see there uh, some fossilized bone. Uh, I know that's dinosaur bone, and I'll explain that in a second, poking through uh, the side of this rock. It's an interesting shape, quite rounded, which lends itself to perhaps a vertebrae uh, being uh, within, encased within this rock. And actually, uh, when it was found, it was also found with a few other fragments, which uh, luckily do fit on the top here. And again, indicate that it was probably uh, the top of the vertebrae, which has just broken off there, something called the neural process. In addition, a couple of other fragments of bones were found. This looks like the top of a chevron, which I'll explain a little later what that is. Okay, so let's get into the prepping of this. And today's tool that I'm gonna be primarily using is the Paleotech ME9100, which is attached to a large air compressor um, at about 100 PSI. Now, most of my filming is normally done in time-lapse, but I wanted to show you what in real time this looks like. This, I have to say, is really easy prep work. There is a great interface between the rock, the matrix, and the bone. And as the pneumatic air tool gets close to that, you can see the, um, uh, the matrix, the rock, just flaking away from the surface of the bone. Um, this is it in super slow, it's as slow as I could possibly get it. And as you can see, the pneumatic air tool actually goes, it's not a rotating tool, it goes in and out at very high speed, causing great vibrations. And as that gets close to the, to the matrix, to the rock, as you can see, it just flakes off or pings off pieces at high speed. And there are various tools that you can use for um, getting larger flakes off um, and going more aggressively or very small flakes uh, for more detailed work. Obviously, you want to make sure that the needle uh, doesn't go close to the bone itself as it will go straight through that. So you have to work uh, your way across it while keeping the needle away from the actual bone. So as we return to the time-lapse section of the video, as you can see, we're motoring now through the removal of the matrix and we're really exposing the shape of the bone that was uh, encased within this rock. And as you can start to see, I hope, um, it clearly does look like it's a, uh, it's a dinosaur vertebrae, um, a fairly smallish uh, vertebrae. Um, and because we saw that one of the fragments of bones looked like the top of a chevron, um, a chevron is a bone which is on the underside of most of the tail vertebrae and that helps with uh, uh, protecting blood vessels and nerves along the, um, along the bottom of the tail of dinosaurs. It's highly likely that this is a caudal vertebrae or a tail vertebrae. Now this fossil was found on the south coast of the Isle of Wight in a formation known as the Wessex Formation. And that's very famous in, in the UK for uh, producing great dinosaur material. And it dates from 125 million years ago uh, to the early Cretaceous. Now there's lots of candidates of dinosaurs which have been described from this formation, which this could be from. I think based on its shape and some of the um, uh, characteristics of this, this is from a herbivorous uh, dinosaur and probably part of the iguanodontid family. So within that, you've got the famous iguanodon, but you've also got smaller uh, iguanodontids like Mantellosaurus. Okay, so here's uh, what it looks like after I've finished all the pen work um, to take off the rough matrix, but it's still covered in quite a lot of uh, a thin film of dirt. So we now need to move on to the stage, which is um, using a, uh, a micro sandblasting technique, uh, which I'm using um, aluminium oxide here, which blasts this very small powder onto the surface of the, uh, of the uh, bone. And what that does is it helps remove all the little Little bits of matrix that are still left uh, on the bone and really cleans it up and brings out the color which you can as you can see is much lighter than the uh, than the sandy color matrix um, it, in fact it's coming up really nicely So here it is after those two stages of prep um, and the vertebrae is really clear to see, but there are some really fragile sections of this where the bone has weathered significantly and really needs a little bit of repair work to stabilize it. And of course the neural process at the top needs uh, reattachment. Now, I'm sure there's lots of products available for this, uh, but for me, I use this product called Paleo Sculpt, which is a two-part 
um, epoxy resin, uh, which is both the resin and then a hardener. Um, I'll do this really quickly, but the idea is to take a, a small ball of the, uh, of the resin and then another of the hardener, and it's, um, that's the gray stuff. It does come in different colors, but I tend to use just, just white. Um, and that's the hardener. You've got to make sure that you do two equal size balls. Uh, what you then do is you have to mix these two, uh, two parts together in equal measure, and that's what I'm uh, doing here. Once that's then fully mixed, uh, it's ready to then apply. And what's great about this is it doesn't shrink um, or it doesn't expand, and it just turns to rock if it, it, uh, after about 24 hours. So what I'm doing here is now just taking very small amounts of this, um, of this mixed resin and using um, some basic sculpting tools, I'm putting it into uh, some of the major cracks which need stabilizing. Now these are the cracks which just are too big to use some of the consolidants like um, uh, Paraloid B72. They really need um, some structure because they're just too deep. And on some of these uh, occasions, a bit of paleo sculpt is critical for the long-term preservation of these fossils. So what I'm doing is just slowly getting it deep in, uh, bit by bit, deep into these, um, into these grooves. And then I'm just slowly texturing it out um, to make sure that it doesn't have any fingerprint marks in it, for example. Now, one of the things that I, I use is another bit of rock or a small bit of bone um, from another specimen, and I just imprint that um, into the surface of the clay. Sometimes I do that when it's part dried, um, other times, um, I do it, it during the process um, and that just gives a bit more of a texture of bone and doesn't look as obvious and, and certainly avoids having any fingerprint marks in the, in the putty. As you can see here, I'm also using a clamp system uh, just to ensure that I can attach the neural process uh, back to the main vertebrae. That requires a little bit of, of this clay really to create the adherence uh, between both the neural process and the main vertebrae. And uh, I just use this clamp system for that, which is really good. I think it's a scientific one to hold flasks, but works perfectly to hold a verts together. And here it is after about 24 hours uh, of curing, that's now fully set um, and, uh, and is completely solid. It's as solid as rock and that's now got some really permanent structure uh, to this fossil now and it's uh, great for its overall long-term preservation. Now because the Paleo Sculpt is bright white, I do choose to uh, give it a subtle little lick of acrylic paint, a small amount just to blend in that white um, into the rest of the, of the bone. However, for any Puritan that gets worried at this point, all of the records of where the repairs were done were photographed, and in fact in this case filmed, um, so that that's important for a scientific value perspective. And here it is, the finished tail vertebrae of an iguanodontid, potentially something like Mantellosaurus. Um, you'd never have guessed that this came out of that sandy colored lump of rock at the, at the beginning, but it's really come out really nicely and it retains all the great characteristics. And interestingly, it does uh, fit very nicely with um, another one that I have repaired, which was found in a very similar uh, location. So it's great to have the two together. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, subscribe if you want to see more and uh, thanks for watching.